Good morning, everyone. This is, I'm Dr. Kosar, and uh, today a topic of my presentation will be treatment of the BPH in enlarged prostate from related to loose by invasive method. Uh, we will more focus on the uh, the last options uh, left for BPH management that is prostatectomy, prostatectomy. And uh, as you know, along with the um, uh, dynamics of modern urology, the more, uh, treatment modality for treatment of uh, this uh, BP is also evolving from uh, simple uh, medical management, uh, minimal invasive therapy like TURP, TYP, laser therapy, and reaching up to the uh, uh, different modality of prostatectomy from open to laparoscopic to robotic. So the objective of my presentation will be, in, we will discuss on the indications, contraindications of simple prostatectomy and, and preoperative plan of actions, different approaches like open laparoscopic robotic and different techniques like Millions, Freer and Young's and postoperative complications and follow-up. So what, uh, what are the indications of simple open prostatectomy? Uh, uh first considering the size uh but it, it is not the only indications like more than 80 gram is not the indication for prostatectomy but uh, along with it uh, uh there should be like bad diabetic urinary bladder diabetic clone, bladder stone and um, any orthopedic conditions that uh, hamper the positions required for other endoscopic procedure like turp and um, there is the also if there is any urethral uh, um, uh, issues like uh, to avoid uh, to be avoided for urethral trauma, as in case of a stricture and uh, hypospadias repair, and uh, low risk carcinoma of prostate and uh, active surveillance. Uh, who are on active surveillance uh, can also be considered for uh, open prostatectomy or simple prostatectomy. Even her uh, hernia repair can be done along with it. Um, for in large size prostate. Uh, and during consideration for open prostatectomy, uh, surgeon's uh, skills, uh, availability of equipments, and uh, um, uh, discussion with the patient, patient preference, all these should be considered. So these are the absolute indications and uh, relative indications like AUR, recurrent or persistent UTI, severe uh, recurrent hemorrhage from prostate, severe symptoms, unresponsive to medical therapy, renal failure, and any pathophysiology, uh, pathophysiological changes in the kidney, ureter, bladder, secondary to boom due to enlarged prostate. Contraindications can be uh, small fibrous glands, significant prostate cancer, uh, previous prostate or pelvic surgery that may obliterate the excess and uh, other uh, any other medical uh, comorbidities that doesn't allow for or doesn't uh, allow the patient to be fit for surgery. These are these are the contraindications. So this is the UA guideline, um, uh, and which uh, which is to be considered while uh, uh, when the patient is uh, has absolute indications for prostatectomy, as already discussed, uh, whether high risk or no and whether any patient can go for surgery as per, uh, from medical point of view, uh, any anticoagulation that can be stopped or no, whether volume is more than 80. And if all these are okay, then uh, these are the four options available, prostatectomy, laser, by uh, inclusion, whole lip, and thulium, TRP, even TRP, bipolar TRP can be considered. So preoperative plan of actions as, as for all other procedures like history, especially IPSS score and examinations, uh, especially DRE to rule out carcinoma of prostate findings, suggestive of carcinoma of prostate, and some investigations like baseline, UFM, QMAX, post wire residual, PSA, uh, just to rule out cancer, any future suggestion of CA prostate. And ultrasound transrectal is uh, uh, it's not mandatory, but uh, it can be considered uh, to uh, see the size of the prostate and the lobes enlarged. And uh, cystoscopic is also uh, can also be done, 
especially if the patient has hematuria, stone, diverticulum, any stricture. And to confirm the median lobe enlargement, because uh, um, even this will uh, help us to determine the approach we are going to consider for prostatectomy. And uh, evaluation of upper tract in if there is renal dysfunction, recurrent UTI and hematuria. And very important counseling and consent uh, that should be uh, taken with uh, proper counseling uh, to the patient regarding the incontinence, erectile dysfunction, and retrograde ejaculation, UTI, injury to ascent structures, bad and neck contracture, stricture, and need to transfusion, DVT, pulmonary embolism, along with other uh, interoperative and postoperative complications. A day before surgery, as for other operations, we will prepare the patient with a midnight NPO antibiotic before incision. And these are the instruments that is required for a sima open prostatectomy, like a little prostatectomy set with uh, all these uh, equipment, scalpels, um, retractors, different retractors, and for safe and um, omni retractors. Uh, maybe this is the Belfort retractor and uh, Buck Walter detector, these are different, different types of self retreating detector that is used by the anal pack and cystoscopy set if required. So, out of the different approaches, we will start with retro pubic open simple prostatectomy, and the position should be uh, supine with the table should be slightly flexed and uh, mild tender network positions, that is, here, uh, head in should be slightly downward. To just to uh, let the uh, boil content and everything go uh, downward and open, uh, empty the pelvis. And uh, patient should be catheterized. And incision is uh, two type of incision lower midline incision or finasteral incision, both can be given. So, um, and then abdomen should be opened in layer. Um, it skins with fascia muscle and but peritoneum should not be open. Uh, and we will reach the space of ridges, that is the space between the symphysis pubis uh, and the uh, 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 urinary bladder, and on both sides, uh, remnant of iliac visuals. Then, this is this. The, uh, then uh, we will, uh, this is the space uh, we will reach after um mm, uh, uh, entering the pelvis uh, and um, this is the prostate and uh, above it there will be some fat and this should be uh, the fat should be removed with the help of uh, the big forceps and mesom scissors and then we and then uh, we after uh, we will get this view then we will give a, a incision on the endopelvic fascia both side then we will tie um this uh, dorsal veins uh, on the apex and toward the um, you know, bladder as as well and on both the at five and seven o'clock position to get the proper hemostasis then uh, uh, we will give uh, uh, we are uh, the then we will localize uh, this uh, bladder neck by uh, uh, move, uh, by moving the folic and catheter balloon, and then just below the bladder neck, we will give a suture. Uh, we will go to parallel so, uh, rows of suture from uh, horizontally along the transverse direction uh, over the prostatic capsule, and uh, in between the. Uh, Two rows of suture we will give in season and we will open it and it should be deep enough to reach the adenoma. This is the, the opening and reading the adenoma and when we did the adenoma then we will uh, uh, we will uh, use uh, sharp uh, uh, instrument like scissors or our uh, electrocautery and then we will uh, no, no, I mean, uh, scissors and to, we will dissect a plane between the capsule and the, and the adenoma and uh, we will get, uh, uh, when enough space is uh, achieved, then we will, uh, using our index finger, prostate, uh, um, uh, 
blunt dissection can be done on both the lateral sides and posteriorly and mobilizing the pressure from all sides and um, uh, and then the anterior uh, over the anterior commissure sharp incision should be given uh, up to the uh, uh, just above the posterior uh, ureth uh, cap uh, posterior urethra but without injuring it and uh, because if it is in, it will be injured there will be risk of rectal injury and uh, then we will fracture the urethra from uh, about up to the verum antenum if there is any median lobe enlarge it should be held with the um, uh, at least then it, it should be uh, uh, incision is given circumferentially over it and it should be mobilized from all sides then after uh, proper uh, mobilization of the prostate from all the, the sides circumferentially the apex should be approached at the end and During uh, dissection at the apex, uh, we should be very careful to avoid injury to the um, sphincter, and uh, it uh, it can be removed by either um, sharp dissection in open prostatectomy. It's a, uh, uh, very hard to visualize this area, so um, with very care, uh, either sharp dissection or we can pinch the both of the fingers to just uh, remove it without injuring the mem uh, sphincter. And after uh, removal, then the adenoma should be removed out and then we will uh, see if there is any other bleeding vessels then that, uh, that can be cauterized and uh, if, if there is significant bleeder, it can be ligated. Then next step is trigonization of the bladder neck. And uh, uh, regarding trigonization, um, uh, uh, both uh, these uh, at five and seven o'clock positions, uh, there's a uh, at, in a figure of eight suture can be taken, and it helps in both um, hemostasis as well as fixing the uh, um, this uh, trigone part of the urethra. And we will we can take the uh, if there is any excess uh, on part of the trigone that can be excised, and uh, this. Uh, uh, And then uh, this uh, uh, part of the uh, trigone can uh, it, it should be uh, uh, tied with the uh, uh, remaining part of the uh, urethra, posterior urethra pressure. And uh, uh, this trigonization can be done. And the advantage of this trigonization is it helps in uh, uh, early uh, epithelization and also placement of. Uh, uh, easy um, placement of Foley catheter then the, after this Foley catheter uh, 22 large size like 20 24 about three way Foley catheter can be should be passed and then uh, the, uh, during trigonization uh, it's very important to uh, uh, notice the ureteric orifice uh, it should be avoided uh, to be taken in the suture and it can be avoided like if it is from uh, uh, to identify the UO, uh, we will get uh, we can see some peristaltic movement uh, over here efflux of uh, uh, urine, and uh, and we can give some intravenous dye. Uh, then, uh, then the closure of the capsule is the next step. And before closure, we will inspect proper hemostasis is there, and the uh, beru can be seen, posterior urethral wall can, can be seen. Sorry. This beru, posterior urethral wall, and bladder neck can be easily seen. And this um, confirms we are on the safe side. Then, after proper hemostasis, uh, we will close the blair, uh, we will close the capsules. And uh, 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 starting with the um, suture on the both the lateral ends and uh, in a continuous layer, it should be a continuous layer. And uh, in the mid midline, it should be closed, uh, uh, um, it should be tied with. Uh, with themselves first, then with each other, making it a watertight 
closer and uh, and depending on surgeons um, and the conditions like if there is hematuria or not um, supra catheter and drain placement uh, can be considered So there is uh, another alternate uh, capsular uh, alternate options for capsular incision is basically capsular technique. This is a basically vertical in, uh, vertical incision that we will give uh, from the uh, bladder uh, lower part of the bladder near the bladder neck up to the um, prostatic capsule anteriorly. Then um, then we will open it and. Uh, uh, we will open it, giving a tie, taking on a tie. Then you will inside, uh, extend the incision up to, uh, toward the apex, and then uh, similar procedure as we have done, mobilizing the um, prostate uh, with the index finger broadly from all the sides, and uh, removing the prostate uh, with very careful on uh, the apex and posterior capsule. And then the same, uh, same as explained before, trigonization of bladder, hemostasis, and uh, this closure of the uh, in this procedure, closure of the bladder and capsule by um, post string suture on the bladder incision and interrupted suture on the uh, uh, like for bladder incision, the will persisting uh, post, uh, persisting closure should be there, and for this capsular incision. Uh, interrupted uh, closure can be done, and for uh, over the bladder, it can be uh, reinforced um, like, like closure uh, over the incision. And uh, next, uh, uh, drain and uh, suprapubic uh, catheter placement is uh, as per surgeons. Um, and the uh, regarding post-operative management, uh, along with um, the um, uh, IV fluid, antibiotic, painkillers. Uh, the most important, like uh, DBT prophylaxis, should be given uh, by com uh, DBT stroking, compression, and uh, heparin and roll. Early mobilization of the patient um, uh, should be considered, and uh, patient should be put on uh, continuous bladder irrigation with the traction of the Foley catheter uh, balloon inflated uh, around uh, 30 40 ml so that uh, it will give a good hemostasis. And uh, regarding drain, uh, it should be removed. Uh, any drain should be removed whenever its uh, purpose is achieved, like uh, whenever the output uh, uh, the output coming from it is uh, gradually decreasing less than 50 ml. And if it is not uh, blood or urine that is leaking out, and the Foley catheter should be removed three to five days postoperatively, and um, the patient should be given a um, catheter uh, widening trial. If it is successful, then we can remove the SPC gradually. Another ap uh, approach for prostatectomy is suprapubic simple prostatectomy. In this approach, uh, the indications for this approach is especially if there is any bladder pathology, like uh, if there is any stone or diverticula that need to be operated. And if there is significantly enlarged median lobe of the prostate, and then this approach is more favorable. So uh, position supine with uh, um, slightly flexed and uh, mild tender in above position. Then we will place a Foley catheter, inflate it. Then we will, in this uh, approach, we will fill the bladder with 200 to 300 cc of saline just to uh, facilitate the exposure of the um, bladder. And then the uh, incision preferred is the lower midline incision, although fenestrial incision can be given. Then abdomen is opened in layer. Um, very cautious uh, for the superior, uh, inferior, uh, superficial inferior epigastric vessels um, during dissection of the um, wall. Then we will reach the uh, um, on uh, below the wall. Uh, we will just um, push uh, pull out uh, the bowel uh, uh, kefalet 
and uh, the space of radius will be there um, between the uh, previous bladder and then we will uh, give us the stomy and exposure we will remove the catheter then the two stage sutures uh, should be taken uh, on each side of the midline below the peritoneal reflections incision should always be below the peritoneal reflections then uh, we will open the bladder either vertically or transversely then we will extend the incision and um, several pair of stage sutures on each side of the midline uh, to facilitate exposure with a figure of eight suture at the cordial line just to prevent further extension during uh, uh, dissection. So the uh, site of inc uh, incision on the bladder is uh, two to three centimeters superior to the bladder neck. And uh, after opening the bladder, we will um, give a good inspection of the ureteral orif uh, ureteral orifices and uh, any pathology like bladder stone. If there is, it should be removed, and diverticular if, uh, if if it is, it is there, it should be removed. Then, um, then uh, toward the bladder neck, uh, we will palpate the. Uh, prostate and uh, after filling it we will give a circumferential incision uh, over the prostate and using a, um, a cutting current of the bovi and then using the curved uh, scissor uh, mid-gen bomb scissor uh, at a six o'clock position at a six uh, six uh, o'clock position we will make a space then uh, enough space between the adenoma and prostate capsule and then uh, fingers should be inserted uh, be, uh, between the adenoma and the capsule uh, posteriorly or it can and it should be uh, like prostate should be mobilized with the blonde dissections um, on um, both posteriorly laterally and then uh, uh, from above uh, and it, after well mobilization of the prostate from all the sides, uh, apex should be uh, approached uh, with very cautious uh, without injury, uh, uh, injuring the sphincter. And uh, during uh, this uh, in, uh, enucleation, we can uh, use. Uh, um, uh, our assistant, uh, we can ask our assistant to put a finger for uh, rectum and push the prostate upwards so that uh, it can be the helpful during enucleation of and uh, finger mobilization of the prostate. And after the yeah, prostate is well mobilized uh, with the phenoclum, it can be held and taken out. Uh, we're giving a sharp incision over the apex without injuring the sphincter. And regarding hemostasis, uh, um, the blood supply um, of the prostate uh, 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 arising from prostate, uh, this uh, prostatic artery giving a uh, urethral branch. This uh, um, over here we are at both on the both side that is five uh, and seven o'clock positions. We can give a figure of eight suture to get a good hemostasis. And um, regarding hemostasis, if it is inadequate, then um, there are some more maneuvers that can be done, like uh, uh, plication suture, uh, as described by uh, plication suture as described by Conquer, like um, just below the um, uh, bladder neck, uh, we can give two sutures, um, placating it, um, taking on the posterior capsule. Uh, and uh, such so that it will give a uh, compression effect and um, good hemostasis. Another is uh, by uh, we uh, persisting closure. Uh, um, persisting uh, closure can be uh, done by uh, taking a suture from along the circumference of the um, bladder neck, uh, uh, and we will put a foley uh, uh, in between and. Now we will take out the suture outside um, the abdomen on the skin and uh, we will give it a uh, traction so that uh, there, will be a, there will be a compression effect over the bladder neck. So there's and uh, 
other method for hemostasis is uh, this uh, bladder. So we can use some hemostatic agent like microfibrillar collagen and surgery cells and they'll form and all. So after proper hemostasis uh, um, and um, packing is also very commonly used for hemostasis. So after the proper hemostasis, uh, we will uh, close the uh, bladder, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll close the bladder in uh, either two to three layer. Mucosa can be closed with uh, running suture and uh, uh, vital two zero and uh, incorporating some muscles and muscles, uh, uh, superficial and deep muscles in an interrupted lumbar suture using uh, catgut or vitreal. And after closure, we will uh, assess the adequacy of closure and hemostasis with irrigation and uh, well, like filling the bladder for, uh, with the balloon polyurethra. And we will see, uh, see if there is any leak or not. And the pelvis, uh, after um, water seal drain, uh, uh, watertight uh, closure is uh, confirming the watertight closure, uh, we will irrigate the pelvis uh, with an obvious amount of normal slime, then complete routine wound closure with the uh, of the, uh, of the uh, anterior wall can be done. And uh, same goes for uh, this uh, suprapubic and um, a drain placement if uh, to uh, uh, get adequate uh, if there is adequate hemostasis um, then just um, three way folic catheter can be considered or and drain placement can be done and suprapubic uh, is just to continue the uh, bladder irrigation And post-operative uh, care, as already explained before, along with that, uh, we'll consider the normalization of blood pressure and then removal is already explained. Post-operative complications, uh, we have early and late complications, early are bleeding, uh, urine extravasation, urine noma, post-obstructive uh, uh, diuresis, there will be significant loss of salt and water and restricting the monitoring of fluid balance, blood pressure, heart rate, and electrolytes, and other complications like UTI, uh, EPDM, or arthritis, osteitis, PVs are um, some rare complications. And late complications could be bladder neck contracture, uh, um, urethral stricture, post-operative importance, uh, incontinence, and retrograde ejaculations. Um, Although uncommon, the group of patients who are unable to provide have uh, persistent drainage from the suprapubic site, have unchanged and troublesome symptoms, and have chronic uh, UTI require uh, some evaluations by endoscopy, uh, cystoidothrography, and urodynamic study, and significant pelvic uh, and uh, other complications of uh, significant pelvic surgery like uh, uh, DVT, pulmonary embolism, myocardial infection, these are also some complications. Mm -hmm approach by, by a laparoscopic robot, uh, patients should be uh, kept midnight and pure and enema can be given uh, for rectal to clear the bowel, uh, although it's not mandatory. And so instruments required for laparoscopic approaches are endoscope instruments and surgical materials are uh, lens of either 0 or 30 degree laparoscopic uh, ultrasonic or bipolar scalpel, uh, needle holder, Mary Lane, Casper irrigation suction system, a traumatic forcep, and blunt adenoma dissector, electrocotry loop. Occasionally, Cartner uh, thomasomes uh, is also used uh, to externalize the traction which are applied to the gland median lobe. And uh, so the different sutures used are uh, absorbable 30 bicrylls, uh, type CT1, uh, needle 20 monocrylls, UR6, and B-log suture, non absorbable protein 20, nylon 20, extraction bag, endolobe, and genus system preferably close uh, types, that is Jackson Pratt type. Regarding the positions of the equipment and personnel in the operating table, uh, uh, from this picture, we can uh, 
uh, see uh, the surgeon should be uh, if the surgeon is right handed he should be on the left side of the patient chin. It should be on the le uh, left side of the patient and mm, first assistant, assistant uh, on the opposite side of the surgeon and second ass assistant beside the surgeon. Nurse, uh, scrub nurse uh, mm, should be just diagonally opposite to the uh, surgeon on the opposite side and anesthesiologist along with his equipment uh, on the head of the patient. And monitor uh, should be toward the uh, mm. legs. Patient position, uh, regarding patient position, patient should be in the supine uh, tender and box positions uh, with hand tucked on each side and legs can be adopted if uh, perineal compression is required during the procedure. Surgical technique, uh, there are two types of uh, surgical technique for via laparoscope, either it will be transperitoneal or extraperitoneal. Generally, um, we will talk about the transperitoneal over here. And regarding the placement of progar, um, there are two, uh, two techniques uh, that can be used uh, in the beginning, that is Barry's needle uh, and Hesson's technique um, for um, uh, placement of progar. And that is in the, uh, this technique has been uh, creating the pneumoperitoneum or um, I have very little and uh, um, as such technique is uh, open technique you know, for placement of trocar. So uh, while placing the trocar, right hand surgeon can see uh, how he has holded uh, the trocar, um, the holding uh, it uh, with the two uh, fingers, index and middle finger on the lower part and uh, with the um, placing the uh, upper part over the inner, so that it will be a very controlled uh, uh, and can be pushed uh, inside in a controlled manner. And the site of trocar placement will be uh, um, at the umbilical level, uh, one point uh, um, um, optical trocar should be placed and. Uh, two centimeters below it, uh, parallel lines will be drawn, and uh, and eight to ten centimeter from the um, primary uh, umbilical trocar uh, uh, we can see uh, on the right side ten mm trocar port, and on the left side five mm port are placed, and and each uh, left fossa five mm port are. For um, access to the so after placement of droga, creating your know, and access to the pre bladder space uh, uh, can be done by uh, considering the erectus and medianomical ligament as an anatomical reference, and the lens would be placed uh, facing upward. The erectus is the, uh, dissected laterally along the vast difference on each side as well as horizontally up to the promontory of the pubis. Radius space is developed up to the endopelvic fascia, enabling the identification of periprostatic fat, which can be removed. During this procedure, uh, we should be very careful uh, regarding the injury of epigastric vessel upon lowering the erectus. And uh, just above the prostate on, uh, on the east side, while reaching uh, development of the uh, retrograde uh, vesicle space, uh, we should be careful regarding this uh, three anatomy of iliac vein, iliac artery, and dorsal venous plexus. This should not be injured. So, next step is incision over the prostatic capsule and dissection of adenoma. Uh, initially, the lateral prostatic pedicles and the dorsal venous plexus should be identified and controlled with the suture uh, at 5 and 7 o'clock position. Then, uh, uh, incision of the prostatic capsule uh, can be given either 
in the three different ways like uh, trans um, vesicle then uh, from that i mean uh, from the vesicle you know, toward the uh, capsule of the prostate then uh, over the bladder neck and over the uh, transverse incision over the capsule uh, like a million technique and this is the uh, preferred one this is, uh, so we will give the uh, proceed with the millis technique and we are giving the uh, incision over the uh, transverse incision over the prostate capsule and then uh, after uh, after that uh, after giving the incision uh, um, uh, after uh, incision the if there is median load uh, it can be taken on a suture uh, in a fisherman technique for and uh, for traction and a semicircular or crescent is performed with an electro ultrasonic scalpel in the group between the adenoma and the trigone. The trigone and erythral matter should be identified and a semicircular incision is made with the electrocardiogram. Next uh, dissection is carried out from center to side with the ultrasonic scalpel, carefully sealing the blood vessels and lateral complexes as the pain between the adenoma and prostate capsule is developed. And then cut the uh, crescent upward to locate the plane between the upper capsule and the adenoma. As shown in this figure, this is the direction. Then, uh, adenoma is systematically dissected in a synchronized manner using electro, uh, ultrasonic scalpel or blood dissector, irrigation cannula, and laparoscopic scissors. The correct dissection plan uh, is indicated by this green line in the second picture. Uh, our direction should always be slightly. Uh, inclined 40, uh, around 45 degree and upward forward. It should not be direct vertically downward because it may we may damage um, signal vesicles and mass difference and the posterior capsule. So after property section, uh, uh, ultrasonic sealing of the basal of the lateral prostatic uh, pedicle. Uh, and the, uh, by, uh, with the help of the fisherman maneuver uh -huh, traction. We should avoid gra uh, grabbing the adenoma directly with the grasper or laparoscopic instrument. And with the 30 degree lens position downward and laterally, attention is directed to the prostate apex to the uh, identify the prostatic urethra and care should be taken not to injure the splinter as the cold cut is made. The coordination of the traction of the adenoma, counter traction with the suction system, and positioning of the camera are important during this step to help identify the appropriate level. So, next step is adenoma removal and trigonization of fossa. Direct hemostatic control is achieved with electrocautery or suture and the area of the capsule that demonstrates the active bleeding. Trigonization of fossa is performed with one or two double points from the trigon to the capsule uh, or with a monocryl UR6 needle near the urethra. A straight urinary catheter or a foley catheter can easily be inserted at this time. Always lower the neuroperitoneum after trigonization, lower the neuroperitoneum uh, to pressure to 5 to 10 mm IG to see whether we have achieved good hemostasis or not. If there is any bleeder, it, you know, it may become more marked uh, at this pressure, uh, especially at the 4 to 5 and 7 to 8 o'clock position. Where the uh, dorsal band complex is housed. This area can be injured and may require hemostatic control. Um, hemostasis should be. Evaluated at the time of trigonization of the fossa again, tissue should be manipulated with least possible traction. The suture material should be set with a non dominant hand and pulled up slowly and continuously with the dominant hand, taking care to not tear the tissue. 
so uh, um, after trigonization of hemostasis now we will, we will close the um, uh, we will close the uh, capsule and before that um, uh, for that uh, uh, we will place a suture uh, Uh, suture of Hygrel 30 passing through the capsule, neck, and bladder capsule on each side at the top and continued from lateral to center on it from each side. You can see in this picture. And these both should be tied to each other, making it a watertight closure. And after the closure, uh, then can be placed. Uh, um, near the suture line, but not uh, just over the suture. Then um, abdominal fascia is closed uh, with a one zero bicuspid suture through the fascia, and ten mm port is closed. Skin should be closed with proline suture. Um, and this is where the uh, transperitoneal electrodes. Extra peritoneal electrodes can be. Uh, um, Accessed by first placing a port uh, with a balloon and dissection in between the um, peritoneum and the uh, posterior, uh, posterior layer, abdominal wall layer, and we will dissect it. Then uh, other ports are placed, uh, and, you, um, uh, and then uh, gas is encephalated, substantial space is created, then uh, just proceed uh, as in transperitoneal approach reaching the prostatic uh, area. So our next uh, approach is robotic approach. Uh, patient position, uh, so the position in the lithodometer and board position and uh, uh, regarding the uh, equipments and personal in the operating table, uh, right handed, uh, mm, sorry, uh, the, if the robot is Da Vinci system, they should be placed on the um, in between the legs towards the tail end, and um, the first surgeon's first assistant on the right side. And uh, as Klaus just beside it, with the uh, uh, surgeon sitting on the console and anesthesiologist toward the head in. And monitor uh, should be placed um, on the right uh, side of the patient. Equipments uh, required for robotic uh, prosthetic to me are uh, endoscope, monopolar, robotic scissors, may land copter instrument with bipolar or photokinetic energy, one or two robotic needle holder, Bursi needle holder, Cartner Thompson uh, needle automatic clamps, suction irrigation system, non available suture with two zero nylon or proline. And the uh, approach can be either extraperitoneal or transperitoneal. Uh, as described in uh, laparoscopic approach, and it can be uh, accessed both uh, by uh, the bladder that is transpecycle or um, by a retropubic approach uh, that is transcapsular. And Trucker's uh, uh, placement, right Trucker placement, uh, site of uh, our umbilical port that is a pivot port 10 mm. Uh, at the level of umbilicus, uh, then if it is centimeter away uh, from it on each side, uh, 8 mm port are placed, then uh, at 2 centimeter um, below the umbilical port, a uh, gentle line is created, and at its level on each side, and the each lag for some uh, right side 10 mm, left side 8 mm port are placed. So um, after port placement, um, regarding the trans uh, vesicle approach, uh, we can see a video um, in which uh, it has very nicely explained about the trans vesicle approach. 
here we can see a proper placement um, when they create a new operator new then they uh, mm, then all the bowel uh, over the bladder are uh, put back then on then on the field uh, bladder uh, uh, in vertical incision is given um, and then the um, bladder is on then um, uh, and the open margin of the bladder are uh, fixed to the uh, uh, abdominal wall uh, by placement of kidney gel. Here we can see there are just to uh, this, uh, this is done just to um, keep the bladder open. Now we can see the uh, prostatic uh, fossa, uh, cell prostate, and the um, uh, uh, fully coming out. We can use this uh, end of the foliage for traction uh, as well. Then we will uh, now look like the adenoma, um, large prostate. Then we will give a uh, circular incision. And so it's, uh, uh, in the same uh, called in season uh, just above the behind the uterine orifice avoiding injury to the both you then uh, and the adenoma is uh, uh, dissected circumferentially um, in the plane between the capsule and the adenoma we using the uh, harmonica scalpel, suction, and the um, portion. Now here we can see the prostatic adenoma uh, well dissected um, from the capsule. Then fully catheter assist as a urethral guide. Here you can see. Uh, to localize where the urethra is, apex of the urethra is, and, um, and we at the apex uh, and by cutting even a sharp incision, avoiding injury, we can remove the pro uh, prostate out. So after um, that, we will. Uh, if there is any bleeder, we can um, uh, seal it. Uh, then we will reapproximate the bladder mucosa with the urethra, that is called trigonization of the uh, bladder. Especially again, now we can see the specimen is removed uh, in the back. After this, uh, we'll place a fully catheter inside the bladder. Mm, then through a fully catheter, then we will close the bladder uh, in two to three years. Even a continuous suture. Is another transcapsular approach uh, using the robot, and here uh, we don't go um, in season over the bladder. What we do is uh, we use the uracle, uracles and the median umbilical ligament as anatomical reference. We are using the lens uh, zero or thirty degree, mm -hmm. facing it upward, and then we give incision over the uracles and dissect it uh, laterally until the bunch difference is encountered on this side. An interior dissection is done gradually up to the pubis. And uh, next, the dissection should uh, is aimed to develop the radius space anteriorly and laterally, uh, anteriorly to laterally until the surgeon is in the pelvic fascia. And we will see the uh, periprostatic fat that is removed. Uh, here. You can see periprostatic fat and the lateral fascia. And we say the previous issue. 
while removing the peri shedding pad, uh, we should uh, uh, we can use both um, the criteria, uh, you know, a harmonic scale pair. And uh, then uh, uh, we can suture the uh, lateral prostatic plexus uh, uh, as uh, shown in this picture using a 3 0 bike rail on each side to reduce bleeding. And then incision is given on the prostatic capsule at the prostate bladder junction. The vesicular prostatic junction should be identified and uh, four to five centimeter transverse incision is made with the electroharmonic scalpel. This incision allows the identification of the bladder neck and the trigon with the ureteral meatus. Semicircular crescent incision within the group formed between the adenoma and trigon. The tools are uh, used for it are robotic seizure and scalpel. Then systemic dissection of the adenoma synchronized uh, by a synchronized use of Maryland uh, irrigation, suction irrigation cannula and robotic seizure. Each incision goes from point A to B, like shown in this figure so on each side. If there is median lobe, a suture with a proline or a micrill may be made on, uh, on the tip to facilitate exposure and allow circumferential dissection. Management of the middle lobe with the suture is shown in this figure. So between the plane uh, of the capsule and adenoma, dissection should be done circumferentially. And if there are any bleeding um, bleeding vessels seen, that should be ligated and that's so only four to five and seven to eight o'clock position. And adenoma uh, regarding the removal of the adenoma, uh, we say um, that is as the final dissection at the apex, we should be very careful to divide uh, to complete excision of adenoma at the apex without uh, injuring the immunosity uh, the and the inspector. And after removal, the bladder mucosa is, can be um, stitched to the uh, you know, stereo capsule or posterior urethra. And at this time, uh, and this is diagonalization of the fossa. And during this procedure, least action is uh, to be given, is recommended. And then the operatorium can be decreased to 10 mm. We can see if there is any bleeders there and then take control of it. Then suture traction must be performed carefully uh, during this procedure to avoid tearing the injury. So closing then after the antagonization, hemostasis, uh, close, uh, closing can be done um, by taking uh, suture on the you know, lateral sides uh, through the capsule neck, uh, starting from the lateral side through the capsule neck, bladder, and capsule. The continuous closure is accomplished by suture pulling lateral to central with the subsequent closure of both the suture in the center, making it a watertight. And uh, watertight can be uh, so um, closure can be confirmed um, by filling the bladder with 100 to 150 ml fluid and see if there is any leakage or not. Then we can put a um, closed suction drain like injection pad drain, um, not over the suture line, but beside it. Um, that will guide if there will be any leakage or not. And then we will close the, all the pores. Uh, and abdominal face is especially 10 mm port, and the skin is closed with the interdermal suture 3 g proline. Post operative care, uh, as um, for our uh, laparoscopic and open um, procedure to me, uh, all the steps are followed, and then should be safely removed when output is below 50 ml in 24 hours, and it is usually. In one to three days, fully catheter is usually removed after one week. And then we will give a binding trial if patient can pass urine, um, then uh, SPC can be removed after one more week if it was placed. So, complications uh, along with. 
uh, uh, complications of endostatectomy. Uh, uh, comparing to the com com uh, complications of endostatectomy, there is uh, less complication with robotic because we will have a very good vision with the robot and there will be less chances of injury to the um, um, essence structure while dissections, very fine dissection can be done. So um, there will be very less bleeding, um, uh, bladders can be easily controlled and uh, while dissection uh, at the apex, it can be uh, dissected on the vision, so very less chances of injury to the structure. Uh, and uh, still, uh, bladder neck structure uh, is one of the major complications along with bleeding. Post of follow up if the folic catheter was not removed during hospitalization, a budding trial can be performed in the patient on outpatient uh, basis four to six weeks later uh, after. The removal of fully uh, patients should be assessed uh, with IPSS score, UFM, and post viral residual urine. And patient uh, pathology uh, should be reviewed for histopathology report and without any carcinoma uh, there or not. With simple prostate, to me, the risk of prostate cancer development remains, and the patient must be monitored with DREM, PSM, subsequent follow up. This is the recommendation. From EA. With this, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you.